Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, uh, Matt and myself, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the services. Uh, and Matt and I, we're going to talk about the standards uh, that have been produced for combat management system services um, here at the OMG in the C4I task force. Um, these have got quite a naval leaning. Um, there's, there's been quite a lot of naval participation in that group over the years. Um, I gather there's um, a shipbuilding program um, kicking off in, in, here in Canada. So from that point of view, I hope that these are interesting. Uh, also, um, Object Management Group um, produces standards that are as general as they can be, as is appropriate. Um, so they do have uh, broader applicability and we've reached back in our own organizations and out to elsewhere to make sure that that's the case. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple of them and Matt will uh, talk about a few more. Um, a common theme and motivation as to why have we been doing this? Well, ultimately, it's all about reducing the time, cost, and, and risk, particularly around integration, and, and that comes through streamlining the process and how you can achieve that when you've got um, a high-quality, internationally agreed and worked upon standard um, in place at the start. Um, and, uh, and in a context and organization like this, you can get the expertise um, and pull the knowledge from um, across the enterprise in order to get that quality in place early. And that gives you the consistency you need for integration, uh, makes your data compatible, um, allows you to agree on concepts, um, so things mean the same things to the different parties involved. Um, and it gives you a better architecture, so you can reduce your coupling. You can then go on to make changes more easily, um, improve and upgrade. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about uh, the OIRIS and ALMAS standards, which are about um, sensor integration and alerts. So OIRIS um, is uh, mainly uh, a naval uh, radar and other sensor interface integrating with um, uh, main naval uh, command and control or combat management systems. Um, it's got a long history um, in producing this uh, standardized architecture and interface um, and during that time went back on many experts. Um, a radar experts group was stood up uh, with uh, engineers from across many different nations, many different companies. Uh, and we all work together to produce this uh, standard over a number of years, as you see on the timeline. Um, and um, that has already started to show uh, benefits. So as a, a case of point at the, um, the Unmanned Warrior uh, exercise in 2016, um, ORIS was used as the standard to integrate the, uh, the sensor feeds for tracks from all the sensors on the large number of unmanned vehicles to integrate with the C2 architecture. Um, being a demonstration, time and money and everything was very short, so it was mere months in the planning and actually just a few weeks in the actual integration, but nevertheless uh, was very successful. So um, again, this is a, uh, a layered architecture, and this time it's, it's functional layers uh, based on the concept of uh, CMS-facing functionality that supports users um, and subsystem interfaces uh, which integrate with um, the external environment. And that's layered um, with the subsystem services at the bottom for the most general things. Um, and then sensors and uh, specialized sensors such as radars um, sitting on top and that's extensible in that way so it can be extended as we are doing um, to other sensor types such as sonars perhaps um, EW systems and so on. Uh, and so here you see the the functional use cases organized into the layers of the, uh, the more basic uh, foundational uh, functionality nearest me 
um, and then uh, more advanced use cases in the sensors and then very specialized things over on your far right, uh, dealing with radars and um, conceptually there could be other blocks on the far right dealing with the, the specialized needs of other sensors. So that gives these benefits. Uh, so we achieve low coupling with um, the CMS system to the sensors and that supports plug and play concepts. Um, it's very configurable. Um, so you can achieve runtime discovery uh, concepts. It supports passing of uh, configuration parameters between the systems so that they can, um, it helps achieve that decoupling. Um, it's an extensible framework, um, so there's a hierarchy into which new concepts can be put, um, so you can um, develop new things, uh, and you can have your own uh, data structures and data types, and um, that can be system specific, so you can tailor it for your specific system whilst keeping the generality that you can um, take things that have been developed elsewhere and so on. And it's all supported uh, by the standards that you've been um, hearing about uh, today and yesterday, uh, particularly standards developed here at the OMG like um, DDS and UML. Uh, so we're not standing still. Um, our RS V2 um, was there was a request for a proposal uh, kicked off at the last meeting. See the the timeline up there. Uh, and that's requesting um, additional services that will support new um, or different additional sensor types uh, and maybe filling in the, the block chart um, to the bottom. So particularly things like the sort of parametric data that um, a sensor say such as a sonar would provide. Uh, and finally, um, I want to talk about the, the ALMAS standard, which is about alert management. So uh, in a complex C2 system of systems, then um, you, you may have uh, many disparate users whose workflow is perhaps driven by events, represented by alerts to them. Um, and that could be generated by many components uh, throughout the system, which may be uh, different and independent and so forth, so on and so forth. Um, and um, ideally you would need a system that manages that um, and um, also gives you independence if as you upgrade your application components, but also as you change your um, HCI concepts, um, how you arrange your operators from different system instantiations um, or um, change the, the makeup of your operator team and, and you want to be able to do all those things independently um, and that's why a, a standardized um, alert management architecture is a really good and useful thing and that's what we've achieved using this standard. Again, it leans back on OMG standards like uh, DDS and CORBA, uh, and it has the richness to um, support the sort of um, alert functionality and life cycles and callbacks and so on that um, you might need in an alert management system. Okay, so I'll hand over to Matt, who will talk about a few more of our standards. Great, so uh, Matt Wilson, uh, work first inventions it's a shameless plug up there but um i've got quite a few things i'm going to go through so they're going to keep them at a fairly high level just to give you a familiarity of some of the other standards that we're also working on so the first one i'm going to talk about um we call it taxit related services so those of you who aren't terribly familiar with the the jargon the taxit is a common term we use for the tactical situation display that you'd have often in a combat system so it's like that big picture you see up on the top, you usually got a map on it and you got airplanes flying around and tanks and you know ships out there. So um, all these systems have lots and lots of taxits on them and they have very similar features, very sim similar functionality, very similar requirements for getting data into them and for other um, components of the system to want to tell it to do things. So we've looked at a series of different standards. The first one that we did 
was actually a controller API. So this is a standard, so if I've got an alert that tells me I need to engage a particular aircraft because it's hostile and inbound, um, we've standardized the API call for that alert manager to call the taxit to tell it to hook that track and center on the track and set the range scale to X. Um, so it's very simple kind of calls that you would make to almost any taxit that you would do and it gives you a standardized way to do that. So it's the, the data structures and the application programming interfaces for those kinds of interactions. Uh, and right now we're actually uh, finishing up a uh, revised specification for taxit entity exchange. So all of these pictures are sharing the same kind of information. They're about entities that are flying around or moving around or floating around in space. Um, so we standardized the data structures to describe those kinds of entities and some of the kind of shape data that you would want to represent on uh, a taxid display. And then the APIs for pushing that data into and out of those displays. So that if I wanted to swap them out or you know, upgrade those capabilities, it makes it more consistent um, for the implementers of the supporting services around the taxit as well as more consistent uh, the ability to potentially change uh, vendors. Uh, we got a couple more we're working on. So some of the geometrics is partially covered in those other two standards we've already done. There may be a little bit more extensions we want to do there. And then uh, one that I've wanted to do for quite some time is just a very simple standard for um, configuring some of the typical visual components you see. So what color do you want maps to be? What symbology set do you want to use? And just very simple configuration mechanisms. One of the things we focused hard on was we are not at all in the business of how should it look or how should it behave, but giving you a standardized way for you to set those because each system has its own very specific requirements for the display. That's a whole business in itself of how tactical displays should look and we're not going there. Um, so the next one I'm going to talk to you about is, uh, is a new standard that we have out in the RFP stage. Uh, we're, we're soliciting new um, uh, submissions against this, this concept. So it's, we call it C2I nav. So it's a command and control interface for navigation data. So th there's lots and lots and lots of sources of data out there that tell me where am I, where do I think I am, what's my vehicle's attitude, and um, how close am I to other things. But each one of these sensors has its own very specific interface, but it's sharing a lot of similar kind of, of information. So what we want to do is create kind of a, a naturalizing hub to make that communication to the command and control system easier. So I kind of have this crudimentary cartoon architecture of the concept. So you're looking, I've got you know, GPS, I've got nav SSI, you know, I've got all these different ways that want to tell me where I am and what am I doing. So if we can get those to pump out some data in a common format, in a common way, I can either then add new sensors into the ecosystem that can help me figure out where I am. And it gives me a common way for those command and control components in the, the combat management system itself to ingest and digest that data and potentially um, do some controlling actions back on that sensor. Say I want you to give me more, give it to me faster, give it to me slower, here's the, the rate that I want you to give me your data. Um, so that's, that's one we've got an RFP out for right now. Um, if you guys are aware of vendors in this space, um, we'd love to get as, as robust of a response as we can on that. Um, Next one, you guys heard a lot about DDS, I believe, earlier today. Um, and a lot of our systems, at least in the US Navy, I'm not speaking for the US Navy, but I'm familiar with some of the things they're doing. Um, they use DDS as the middleware framework to get everything talking together on the ship. And you, know, you saw some of the other um, mission critical applications. But the concern is, I don't want to rely on the DDS system itself to tell me how it's doing. There's the desire that I could have an independent mechanism that I could have monitoring my DDS network and my DDS platform performance so that I could get an independent assessment of how healthy are the data pipes in my system. So here's another um, crudimentary architecture picture here. Um, so I've got a bunch of 
of participants in my network. So these could be a command and control module, that could be an AI um, agent that's running, maybe it's my track managers going on in there, and they're talking real happy over the DDS network. The idea is to set a, a, a set of services that can plug into a DDS platform and independently report out through a channel that's independent of that DDS network itself. How is the, how is the status of the DDS network going? So we call that DDS monitoring, and you would use it for um, health of your network, status of your network. So I'm going pretty quick here, so I apologize, but time is short. Uh, another big area is these mission critical systems have a lot of testing, and there's a whole plethora of testing tools out there, different ways to do things. So we had an effort um, that's actually in an in a RTF right now. So there's actually a real standard out there called Test IF. So it sets a whole catalog of standards related to how do you define um, different kinds of, of things in your test ecosystem. So test cases, test results, test scripts, test procedures, um, and all of those kinds of things in your, your test world. And the objective is not to try to be a tool that would do it, but to allow for these different tools in the ecosystem to share that data from one step to another. So maybe I've got a requirements definition tool that I need to output that requirements data into a testing tool, and then this tool helps me write really good scripts, but then I've got another tool that's gonna to do some automation. So I've, we've created a, a data standard to throw all those results into kind of a common data lake, to use a really overused term these days, um, so you can actually start to interchange that data more freely. Um, so kind of wrap it together here a little bit. Um, you know, Talos, BAE, and Simventions were all pretty, pretty involved in this task force. We really, really want more involvement. The more of the right smart people here we have working on these things together, the better standard we get. So if you guys are aware of, of agencies or organizations or companies that really can help contribute to this, um, we'd love to, love to bring them in. So they can talk to me and or talk to OMG. I'm sure OMG would love to have more people at the table. Um, so there's a list of the stuff we just talked about. I uh, talked about some new stuff coming up. Um, and actually, Simon gave a brief earlier this week on some, some other new activities that we have pursuing in the C4I task force and um, new, new people. So one thing Charlie wanted me to talk about is, is we work on the things that our customers have a need for. So we're really here pushing forward objectives that will help us get more open architecture type systems that are very directly relevant to real needs that we have in our, our specific systems. So key takeaways, we're looking at, you know, what, what standards can we add to the open architecture ecosystems to make it cost less, schedules a little more achievable, um, re reduce risk. Um, and I'll emphasize again, all of these things, although we may have defined them from the framework of a, com of a combat management kind of lens, they're very relevant to many other domains. You know, so that's always kind of a battle we fight with the architecture board. Well, this could be used for this, this, and this, and this, and this. Well, yes it can, but we need it for our C2 stuff. So let us push it through as a C2 standard, and then we'll find its applicability on a broader case. So. Okay, thank you.